Okay, we're starting in the Red Vision install on the AluCab. I just finished unboxing all the accessory parts that are gonna help us mount the Red Vision system up into the corner of the cab. All these products, this, uh, this plate, all the adapter plates, and all the accessories and hardware came from GP products. They made the accessory for us to then take both the Red Vision battery manager, GP factor, supplied all the brackets, and the distribution panel. It'll get mounted behind this bracket, and then the whole thing gets wired and put up in the driver rear corner of the alley cab. So before we started, I just wanted to show you all the pieces and parts. As we pull these pieces together, we're gonna bring them all up. Our wires all come out of the back, attached to the Red Vision system here behind the panel, and then we'll feed all of our auxiliary systems from inside the alley cab. Depending on how I mount the battery manager, my all my wire connections will be at the top or the bottom. So right now I'm expecting that this power outlet or the shore power outlet will be at the top and then all my other connections to the battery manager will be at the bottom. Okay, check my instructions. <gasps> Holes line up. <laughs> yes. I think this is the part in the instructions it specifically says with a very short 530 seconds Allen key, it's because I have to get in this gap to hold this Allen key without bending the Red Vision plate too much. It's time to go visit the grinder. Here we go. We now have a very short 530 seconds Allen wrench. That's it. Okay. The TVMS, Total Vehicle Management System, is now attached to the bracket that is also then attached to the battery manager itself. So we now have one object that is going to get attached to the faceplate. It'll go on the inside in here. This gets screwed onto that. And then this whole unit goes up into the back corner of the alley cab. Many of these wires here, these are all the accessories. You have two, you have a 10 amp load and a 30 amp load. There's five 10 amps and five 30 amps. Um, the whole system is now in the back corner, but I have to run wires before I can actually mount it. Okay guys, it's the next day. Ryan yesterday was working on getting that Red Vision and Manager 30 mocked up in here. So he's gonna be coming in later today. I've already pulled out all the goose gear. All the goose gear was in the back of our Tundra, just getting it mocked up. I need to pull it out because we need to run a bunch of wires through the bed. So I found a good spot, took out the rear tail light, made sure we had a good spot here. So I drilled a hole. I'm also going to tap into the reverse power wire behind the tail light because we're gonna send a trigger wire to our red arc system to be able to turn on the area lights and reverse lights when we put it in reverse. So that trigger wire needs to be wired in. Yep, that's a good one. I have already ran two big power wires from the front battery area to the back, but we hadn't gone from there. So one is gonna be an Anderson connector that we're gonna mount right here by the trailer plug-in. The other one is a power to go to the Manager 30 brain inside the cab. So I've wide those off underneath. We've also decided to run ground from the chassis back here instead of running ground all the way from the front battery because essentially a battery ground up there is just a chassis ground. It's we have a ground bus bar that's gonna be coming off of there back to the Red Vision system. Let me show you that. This, if you can imagine it, is gonna be mounted up there. The house batteries are gonna be in the middle, just like on Raven. So we have the chassis ground going into the bed and it's gonna be going right to here. And this is gonna be a ground bus bar. Then the ground that we need for the Red Vision and other accessories can come off of here back over to here. So it's a way to get a, ground, a single ground wire into the bed and then you can branch off from it there. Same with the power bus bar. This is gonna be connected straight to the house batteries in the line. So the house batteries are gonna be here. We're gonna have a power wire going here. If you need to do any kind of work or maintenance on it, it has a 150 amp breaker. You can just disconnect that connection and then you can connect whatever power cables you want to 
Then when you're done, you just reconnect it and you're good to go. Then this is the Red Arc battery sensor. This basically tells the Red Arc system what temperature the batteries are at, uh, the voltage and other stuff like that. So that's wired in as well. So this plate's gonna mount above the house batteries in the front of the bed behind the goose gear panels. There, wires routed. Okay, so I have the power wire going to the Red Vision or the, it'd be going to the Manager 30 from the battery. And then the ground going from our chassis ground bus bar to the Red Vision Manager 30 system. So we got the power and grounds routed. You always wanna burn the end a little bit or else those threads are gonna fray out and make a mess. So I have the power and ground ready to kind of tuck up in here from the main battery area. So now he has all of his wires. The heel is cut to length when he gets the Manager 30 and Red Vision system ready to go in. Okay, we finally reached the point where I have all the parts and pieces connected. We are not finishing the assembly, we are test assembling it. So I'm about to connect the last wire to our test battery. Our little bus panel right here is basically so we can disconnect and connect the house battery pretty easily. So eventually there'll be two lithium batteries sitting right in here. For now, trusty old takeoff from some Toyota, I don't know, somewhere in the back lot. Um, we are going to power up the whole system, make sure everything works, all the switches work, we'll be able to program the Red Vision control panel, all the pieces and parts, make sure they actually work before we bolt it up into its final location. Um, whenever you're building something, build it first, especially electrical, turn it on, make sure it actually works before you bolt it into position, because once it's in position, it's much harder to work on. So in this case, we're ready to do that first test. So. Uh, here we go. Fingers crossed. Yes. We will want to hear, it'll probably sound like a nice little beep bleep, right, when the rev vision turns on. The screen just turned on. <laughs> beep beep. Lights. I like, oh, that's a good beep beep. Right Confirm there. battery settings. Let's, let's not tell it what we're plugging it into. Okay, okay, we won't tell it. It'll be upset about <laughs> it'd, be it'd be offended. It'll be like, wait a minute. AGM? No. <laughs> okay, but that's really good news that's right there. That's huge. That's, that's beautiful. Awesome. So now in here, we have our second Red Vision screen because this is going to be our S-Pod or Switch Pro. We're going to have our top, not our top bar, but we're going to have our other lights attached to it. Our top bar is an adapt bar. It's on a separate system. We'll be able to control all of the stuff in the camper as well. If we wanted to turn off the fridge in there, it'd be able to tell us the temperature of the fridge. So if we're driving and the fridge comes unplugged, there's a probe in there that'll actually tell us, hey, your temperature is getting low or getting high in there. So we have all that control here as well as in there. Okay, when I came into the shop this morning, Brendan came in, he said, so what does this all do? He was impressed obviously by my organizational skills and he's like, wow, it must be really important. It is, but it's also really simple. Basically the Red Vision system is the battery and power management system for the camper. In this case, the Alucab that it's installed into it is controlling the use and production of power from the house battery. So the house battery, which will be placed over here, feeds the battery manager or the manager 30. The manager 30, which is also connected to the start battery and the solar panel, basically takes power and supplies it either charging to the batteries or consuming from the batteries. And then it is controlled by, we'll call it the really smart fuse panel, the total vehicle management system. This is your interface between the switch panels and all the accessories. Together, they are interacted with through the switch panels or your phone through Bluetooth. So in, in very simple terms, this is a battery, a charger, and a fuse panel that's connected to all the accessories, but a really smart one. 
There are 10 outputs in the TVMS. Five of them are rated for 10 amp loads. Five of them are rated for 30 amp loads. So right now I'm filling the fuse bank. They are just standard fuses that fill those slots. It's kind of neat. You might have noticed when I was sticking them in, the little light on the circuit board turns off when the fuse is good. So if one of these fuse, fuses blew and I had a circuit that wasn't working, I would look in this panel and I'd see a little white light next to the fuse that was blown. Makes it really easy to find which one it is. On our 10 amp side, we're running most of our LED lights and camper things. So that's this little nest of wires right here. Um, they are all labeled, especially the ones that come from Alucab. Each of them have their own. On the 30 amp side, we're actually only using two of them right now. The first is our bumper bar, 30 inch light bar up on the bumper. And the second is our fridge. Since this is all going to get tucked away and put behind a nice panel, we ran our wires into each of those outputs and they will just kind of be tagged up behind the panel um, and available if we need to attach a new device to our 30 amp output. It's difficult to get back here once it's all put together. So we pre-ran our wires and they'll dangle down and just be capped off for us to use later. This is a good time to connect, check all your connections too before I put this thing back up. Just make sure everything feels solid. I took some time to clean up these wires. Our extra is all tagged into this free end. And so that's just gonna stay available for future. And then all this is gonna fit inside of this panel. This one I might need help with because I gotta lift it up and there's three screws on this side and two screws on this side. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to hold it and stick those screws in at the same time. Help boy! Young person who has free hands? Anybody available? Sure. Yes. <laughs> We hope this episode of Shop Talk has you feeling charged up and ready to undertake a project to supply power to your own overland vehicle. Be sure to join us next week for the final episode of the Orion 2022 Tundra Build Series, in which we add the finishing touches to this amazing truck before shipping it across the Atlantic to begin filming the Nordic Series. <laughs>